doing today it's a craft with me and I have a visitor Yay. <laughs> so Donna Ray is gonna help us out today with my craft with me video because we sometimes hang out and craft with each other and I'm gonna be knitting and I think she has some stitching with her and I do I'm gonna sit here and talk and yeah. have a conversation and chat with all of you guys and have some fun. So I thought this would be a little fun, uh, different um, setup for a craft with me video. I gotta pull out some yarn here. So I am working on my scarf. This is my Pearl Soho and you can't really see it very well because I'm in the middle of a row. But this is my Pearl Soho diagonal pinstripe Scarf. It's so dashing. Thank you. Truly. So I'm currently working on a few, uh, a stripe pattern that I'm trying to put in as I drop my stitches. Don't Show do that. Guys. There we go. And what are you working on, Donna? So um, when, when we craft together, um, it, I pull out the same project every time for the last several times, and it's been Sally Spencer sampler. But I'm almost, almost done. <laughs> so these, these crafting together times have been very fruitful. So I'm just going to work on that and see how far I get. So the first question I have for you is, have you seen my, what is that? Why is that there? Hold on a second. I got to feel. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. That's why that's there. Duh. Okay. Anyways. Yes. Have you seen my competition video? No. Oh. You have a competition video? Yes. I put up a competition video last weekend, meaning the other day, because we're filming in the middle of the week, about um, doing a large project competition. Oh, I did not see that. I have to see that then. You'll have to go back and look at that. So, 
and it's a, just a little bit of a competition slash giveaway for those of us that are working on large projects, meaning 100 by 100 or larger. Okay, that great we're trying parameters, to get some, thank you. That we're trying to get a finish on. Okay. So, will you, I guess, even though you don't really know much about it yet because you haven't watched the video, will you be entering of course. the competition? Yes, when's the deadline? Uh, whenever I finish Henry. So I have a little bit of time because you're getting close. Well, I still have like a month, a month's worth of work of, uh, I'm thinking about a month worth of work. Okay. Not spread out over <laughs> one month. It's going to be like multiple months, but. So I have a little bit of time. Yes. I had a knot. I hate getting a knot. It drives me crazy. So, um, yes, I will go back and watch and then I will enter. Awesome. How big is Sally? Sally Spencer is 156 by 156. I was going to say, I'm sure that's big enough. Yeah. So, the, um, and just to clarify for some people that uh, there's been some questions about, it does not have to be a full coverage project. Any project that's 100 by 100 or larger is good. It does not have to be fully finished. And you don't have to email me a pre-qualifying picture. It's just emailing me the final picture when okay. we're all done. Okay. And of course, all that information is in the video that I posted over the weekend. So, okay. you know, yes, I'm still I, up. I fully trust the community to be truthful about when they com completed the project and started the project as far as the rules. So I'm, I'm not looking for people to enter it by emailing me a, a pre-picture and a post-picture. We only want post-pictures. Okay. So a little we're bit too much work for me to have to sift through all those emails, right. uh, pre-emails and post-emails. So we're working on the honor system here. Exactly. I love that. Okay. Exactly. It's just <clears throat> fun. It's just a fun way of working through some of our large projects to um, get a finish. I could use that. I could too. Yeah. So, um, gosh, it was a long drive for me to drive to New Jersey to stitch with you. I know. <laughs> do you want to tell folks how we do this? So we are filming using, of course, like how I do most of my uh, double videos, like I do confessions. Yes. Uh, we are using Zoom, which is a free app that you can get on any kind of technological device. So yes. I'm filming on my laptop and uh, webcam. And I think Donna's using her iPad. No, nope, I'm on the iMac, so I'm the big laptop or big desktop. Oh, you're okay. Okay, so she's on a computer too. But I've had other people use phones. I've had other people use iPads. Yeah. And uh, you know, any kind of, and it doesn't have to be on Apple. It could be, it could be, be uh, PC, Android. Uh, I'm on a PC. I don't use Apple uh, laptops. Uh, I have, I have an iPad and an iPhone. <clears throat> I have a PC for my laptop. Okay. So uh, I've always had Hewlett Packard. I probably will always have an HP computer. We, we used to be PC people way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And then, um, then we went Apple and never looked back. I love my Apple products, so. But it's you funny, know what? The very Whatever. first computer I ever had, the yes. only game I ever played on it was learning about the dinosaurs. Oh. <laughs> oh. And it was learning about the Jurassic, Cretaceous, and uh, Tur Jurassic uh, periods of history. Oh, my goodness. Yep. I can remember we were stationed in Iceland and my husband got us the old 8088 computer. I mean, I'm telling my age now, right? Um, and it was the coolest I don't thing. I what that is. Oh, good. <laughs> See, 
that's how old I am, older than dirt. Um, but it was the coolest thing in those days, you know. Now, ugh, it's a doorstop. Anyways, so yes, so you'll have to be, you'll definitely be able to enter Sally Spencer in. Yes. Uh, so have any other large projects that could be a possibility? Oh, thousands. <laughs> because there's, you can have you more have than to, one entry. Do you have to finish? Yes, they have to be finished. Okay. They have to be fully, not fully finished, but, but they, finish, yeah. finish stitching. Finish stitching by the time I put the last stitch in Henry. Maybe. I have some BAPs, but um, a couple of them are just in the very early embryonic mm -hmm. stages of stitching. So and that, that's actually a lot of what people are saying is like, I have so many projects, but there's none that are going to ever be have any chance of getting done before the time, you know, by summer or whatever. And I'm like, but this is still a good motivation. It is great to motivation. Get some, some great progress on those, those projects. Well, and that's half the battle. I mean, as I have witnessed, you know, when you and I craft together, it's a couple of hours and it doesn't seem like much. And of course, we're, we're chatting the whole time. Mm -hmm. So um, sometimes I'm not looking at my stitching at all. I'm too busy chatting. But it doesn't seem like a lot of progress, but over time, I have seen this project progress. Yeah. And that just makes me more excited to, to work toward that finish. So yeah, I think you're right. Great inspiration to move forward. So for those of you who are watching, I am currently knitting, but once uh, I'm done, once we're done filming here, I'm going to be going to stitch. So I just thought it would be fun to have a little bit of multi-crafting. So if you want to be craft knitting or stitching along with us, you're more than welcome to, or diamond painting. Or weaving, or crochet, or whatever you'd like to craft. Exactly. Or maybe even doing some gardening. Maybe people are starting to garden already. Well, get their garden ready. Some of us are. I know. I'm jealous. <laughs> we have in the garden right now, we have beautiful kale and beets and I think some lettuce. It's not too early for the kale. No, as a matter of fact, cold, um, cold weather crops like kale and um, your greens, your salad greens, uh, collard greens, your brassicas like um, broccoli and cabbages, they love this cold weather. I'm actually going to direct sow some radish and carrot this weekend right out in the garden. Our last frost date isn't until April 10th, but certain crops absolutely love the cold weather. And so... I'm going to put some cilantro out, which likes cooler weather. So, yeah, no. lots of goodies. Do you use the farmer's almanac? No. Well, then how do you know your last frost is April 10th? So, really cool thing. Um, there's, there's this thing called the interwebs. <laughs> right? And so on the interwebs, there's this other really cool thing called Google. And you can go to Google and you can type in last frost date and either your zip code or your city name and poof, there will either pop up your extension service with a date or maybe the farmer's almanac, um, other gardening websites, and it'll pop up with your zone and your last frost date predicted, not you know, we've had, we've had snow and hard freezes after our last frost date. Of course. Um, but I just kind of run out. If I know it's going to get really cold and I've already planted things, I run out and put a sheet over them or cover them up. Just, yeah. Just a little protection. So, yeah. 
Well, yeah, because I've always been taught that you have to have your onions in by St. Patrick's Day and yeah. get the onions, right? Onions in by St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Just different, different, um, we won't call them, we'll call them um, antique wisdom. We won't mm -hmm. call them old wives' tales because that's not what they are. If, if we really listen to those old gardeners, there's so much wisdom there things that they did instinctively that they'd been taught through generations about when to put things in and when to harvest them. Um, they knew their soil in a way that, that we don't these days. Yeah. I do like to kind of follow the biodynamic calendar, which is a whole different thing where you're kind of planting by the moon phase. And so certain, um, certain things you'll plant, on certain days, like root crops on certain days, fruit crops on certain days. And that can be very helpful. Um, I have found that we have great success with that. I'm not a purist, like I don't, if I miss the day, I don't say, oh, I can't do it until the next cycle. I just put it in the ground. <laughs> yeah. but, but I do kind of like to follow that. Interesting. Yeah. So do you grow things like on your balcony or? I haven't. Well, I, 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 last year I had some flowers. Uh-huh. I did have some flowers in a pot and the squirrels didn't seem to bother them. Oh, okay. Too much. Right. I have had, when I had a lemon and an orange tree, I did have them out on the balcony, but something kept bothering them. Oh. I don't know if it was the squirrels or if it was the birds. Okay. So I'm hesitant to put anything out on the balcony right. as far as plants, even though I have considered it this year. I would love to get like a tomato or a pepper plant. Sure. And just have one of each or something like that. But I'm not sure how the animals would, because, you know, of course, since I feed the squirrels they're gonna think that oh this is for me look he's put out a buffet <laughs> exactly and you know I, ha I do get the occasional bluebird and pigeon yes on the weekends too so I don't know I've, I've, I've thought about it so squirrels are famous for taking one bite out of the tomato and then leaving it which is infuriating, I think. But I make, um, you know, I'm kind of a kitchen witch kind of thing. Um, I make a hot pepper garlic spray that I spray onto some of my crops mm -hmm. to deter our furry friends. And it seems to work. That and letting Scarlet out the back door every, every yeah. half hour or so. <laughs> My my balcony in the summer also gets exceptionally hot summer sun. Yeah. So. Which the peppers will love. Yes. But I can, I'm also one of those people that will sometimes forget to water stuff oh. outside. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. I'm much better at the indoor plants because I pass them every day. But if I don't open the blind on a given day, I will just tend to forget about them. Yes, I see. Mm -hmm. So not intentionally. And it's not out of laziness. It's just out of like fast paced life. And oh, my stitching took too much time. <laughs> yes, yes. So uh, I, that is another consideration I have to take into. Yeah. I totally get it. What's going on here? So one of the things I'll, I'll say really quickly, just in case any of the viewers are interested in growing tomatoes on their, oh goodness, my eye is itchy, on their, um, patio or you know back deck or whatever 
one of the things you want to be really careful about is to make sure that if you're planting a tomato in a pot or in a small space that you get a determinate variety. Tomatoes come in determinate and indeterminate. And the indeterminate ones will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow like 12 feet tall. Um, and they'll definitely need staking and um, possibly trellising. So um, a determinate variety for a small space is really what you're looking for. And um, they have, you know, little bush tomatoes for specifically mm -hmm. made for pots. So that's what I'd recommend. We grow some of everything and um, some of our indeterminate varieties, oh my goodness, they grow so tall and we just keep putting cages around them and then keep adding stakes and they just keep going and going and going. Yeah, I've had the same thing happen. Yeah. So we also find that um, if we don't get a really hard frost, we will have tomatoes really through Christmas. You know, if we take care of our plants, mm -hmm. pretty amazing. I can't see my pattern. So I hear paper, so you must be a paper pattern person. Oh, totally. That was yeah. alliteration. Paper pattern person. That was beautiful. You did well. It was. Um, yes. I'm, uh, okay, so true confession time. Donna Ray does not own an iPad or a Kindle or any of those things. I worked in libraries for years and years, and um, I have to feel the book and, you know, crack a new book and the, the paper smell and I have to touch the pages and the same thing. I need a paper pattern. And even if I get a PDF, I print it out and um, have that paper pattern. I don't, I'm not a big highlighter. Like I don't mark I'm on my just patterns. Gonna, that was going to be my next question. Do you mark off the patterns? I don't. Um, I did. I think I tried that once and I, I didn't, it looked messy and so I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I write on my pattern is if I've done, and you'll see, how can I not show the pattern? There we go. You'll see I've written my conversion on there. I've also <laughs> written a note to myself about something else. But then I've written, um, you know, the fabric that I'm using and am I doing one over two or two over two, that kind of thing so that when I'm done, then I'll write completed and the date, mm -hmm. and I have a record of when I stitched it, how I stitched it, that kind of thing. Then when someone asks me, oh my gosh, I loved what you did with Hurt Not the Earth, what red did you use? <laughs> I don't know. And so I'll go back to my record and I'll be able to answer them, so. Yeah. Now, do you, do you use paper patterns or do you like on the screen? I'm a mixture of both. Depends upon what I'm doing. Okay. If it's a PDF, I'll, I use an iPad. Okay. That's what I do Henry with. Nice. Or if it's a, so my Jacobi and Bell pool, I'm just using the book and I'm not marking anything off because it's in color and it's simple and it's not complicated. So I don't need to mark anything off. Yeah. Uh, if, for example, my London mm -hmm. by the governor, it is a, it comes as a paper pattern and I am now starting to take pictures of it and put it into my PDF nice. thing because it's such large, you know, it's like, it's larger than eight and a half or it's larger by, than 11 by 14. Yeah. Yeah. 
So it's just easier to do that. And then I can mark off what I do because it's, it can easily get some of those buildings. It's easy to get lost in the yes. past. Yes. So That's a great idea. I do that now. Like my, uh, let freedom. No, not let freedom ring. Um, Mirabilia lady of the flag. Uh -huh. I am using a paper pattern. Okay. And I'm marking it off with colored pencil. Okay. But I might go to, I'm not sure, I might put that into the iPad whenever I flip the, the pattern over to the other side. Okay. So it just depends. Yeah. I admire people that can do their reading on their iPad. Like, I think that would be so convenient. Mm -hmm. I just have to touch the book. I'm very tactile. Yeah. And so I have to touch those pages. And I was in Joanne's today and there was a fabric that, um, the fabric had, the design on the fabric was actually stitched on. And so there was, oh, this beautiful texture. And I couldn't stop, I couldn't stop touching it. <laughs> and the friend who was with me, Sarah, I said, I can't stop touching this fabric. I'm really sorry. I just have to keep touching it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's kind of how I roll. And you can just, you can just stitch with no magnifier i admire that too i can yes i am lucky in that aspect for now see here i am with my a day will fire. come well yeah maybe probably but i'm sure it will but you know stitch and i'll be ready for it stitch all the things while you can exactly Wasn't sure if that was that face was at me for putting my needle in my <laughs> or what that was. No. Um, I'm trying to figure out if I counted correctly. <laughs> oh. Take your time. Yes, I did. Okay. Woohoo. I know it looked so strange that I thought that can't be right. Surely that's not right. But it is. It's just an odd looking number. So that's okay. So you put your need, knitting needle in your mouth. It was in my mouth, yes. So are you a thread licker too? Of course. Me too. Thread lickers unite. A hundred years down the road, somebody can clone me from my DNA and my stitching. Truth. Truth. I don't know if somebody would want to, but they could. <laughs> Lots of little gingers rolling around. Yes. And I see you're wearing your lovely sweater vest. I do have it on today. It's one of those days. It's too cold to have something. 
later on. It looks so, great. You did such a good job on it. Thank you. You're welcome. And before we stop, we better ask, what is your design piece there on the back of your couch? Um, so this is um, uh, Plum Street Samplers Hurt Not the Earth. And um, it's, it's a favorite of mine. I love this verse in the Bible. And um, this was one of the early pieces that I did when I came back to cross stitch a few years ago. And it's just a favorite. I love the, I love the flowers. I love the little um, watering can in her hand. I love oh, I was going to say, I'm like, I don't see a watering can. I see a yeah. pitchfork, but that's a guy. Yeah, that's the guy. It's the lady. And I love the tall, weird little house. Anyway, it's, it's just a favorite of mine. Yes, it's very colonial. Yeah. So. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you for hanging out with me today. Oh my goodness, yes. I was able to get, I think, oops, I can't even show it. I think three or four numbers done. Oh, wow. So, awesome. All I have left is the zero. Yay. <laughs> and I think I got four or five rows on my scarf done while we were chatting here. We are just zooming. We are. We really encourage all of you to um, have stitchy dates with your friends, whether they're close to you or far away. This makes it so easy to stitch with friends or craft with friends. Um, just have a nice time together and make progress all those whips exactly and if you have questions about the technology that we use yeah or you know of course you could always use Skype or FaceTime or any of those different types of apps as well this is just one that we use because I can record on this and use for my channel as well yes. but uh, you know if you have questions feel free to reach out to me on Instagram or my email gingergeraldstitcher at gmail.com I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding the technology that we use yep. uh, for this. If you have questions as far as being able, trying to link up with uh, your friends or people who you'd like to link up with, it's a super simple uh, uh, app download onto your device and all you have to do is set up a, a meeting and email the, the link to your friends and you're ready to go. Yep. So let me know if you have any questions. And I want to thank Donna again for hanging out with me. Yay! You're and very welcome. We will see you on my next video. I will see you on my next video. And until then, don't forget to always be, be creative. creative. See you guys later. Bye.